by now. for about three hours here. I want to introduce my riders and uh, please give them a big round of applause. Our newest rider right here is Pat. I call him Country. Give it up for him. Come on now. And we got to do two introductions with him because we got to introduce his boots too. All American. There you go. Give it up for Pat's boots. And they do. When he takes them off, they just keep walking. <laughs> and then right here, my main man, Ian Mullen. Give it up for Ian, ladies and gentlemen. Come on now. least actually last and probably one of the the finest riders in this side of the Ravenna <laughs> Good for Dustin Neff right here come on now so listen real quick we're not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes but this event just isn't about celebrating and and motorcycle stunt riding and rapping and you know the food and all that stuff like and at one point in my life, that's all I was looking for was the fun things to do. What's happening, you know, because I wanted to be happy for that moment that something was happening. And so, uh, how many guys out there are believers, real quick? Anybody believers out there? All right, all right. All right that's awesome. You know, uh, if you're not a believer, please just stay, stay right where you're at for five, ten minutes. That's all I'm asking for because this is life-changing. And you know what, it's interesting this morning when I'm watching 9-11 uh, and, and, and just the tragedy that struck, you know, and like I said, you know, I was across a little waterway watching it in person back then, and I was lost. I was there doing a Starboy mission on uh, Long Island and, and just uh, lost in space. And if anybody knows me from the past, it, you know, just like the sheriff that used to chase me around, and I apologize to him earlier, he forgives me. <laughs> I hope. No, he does. But listen, we all make mistakes, people, and that's the first thing I want to get out there. You know, I thought I was special, especially wrong. You know, and I don't know anybody out there and what you've been up to or where you came from or where you're going, but, uh, you know, the one thing that I want to say while I got this little bit of time in the microphone is I hated God and I became an atheist because I was mad at the dysfunction in my life. Does that make sense? I thought I was so dirty that nobody can accept me, especially if there's a God up there. And it was crazy because I became very successful in the world doing the motorcycle stunts all over the world. But as I gained this fortune and this fame, it was crazy because there were certain things that I could never deal with in my past. <clears throat> There was pain and suffering that I never knew how to deal with. And I always say, if there's a lot of pain and suffering, it, it turns into misery, it turns into depression, and then it turns into usually drugs and alcohol and other types of addictions. It's going to come out one way or the other. And with me, it came out in all the ways that were wrong. Just ask the, you know, I came down uh, Infirmary Road and it gave me some flashbacks. I used to get locked up in that Portage County Jail. I don't even know how many times. You know, I was locked up before my daughter was even like nine years old. I was locked up two times on her birthday. And it was crazy, you know, because that's what I tell people. A lot of times when we start going into life, you know, it's in those valleys. It's almost like we're blind until something just stops us in our tracks. And a lot of times when I got stopped in my tracks, I thought it was too late. I was looking uh, for advice in all the wrong places. My drug addiction came in through prescription pills, and I know 
we probably all are up to here with that knowledge over the last uh, eight years when this epidemic hit and we started losing loved ones out there. And I know there's a lot of recovery groups out here. And I know if you're in a recovery group, there you go, there you go. I know if you're in a recovery group, you're in the right place tonight. But I also know that you guys have experienced this loss that I'm talking about. And I think everybody in this country has experienced it. Whether it's your next door neighbor, whether it's a family member, a cousin, a brother, a dad, a mom. What do we do with that loss is what the problem was in my life because it was watching my father die when I was a young man in front of me that set me off on my God-hating trail. It was my own ignorance that got me in trouble though. So once again, I'm not gonna talk all night. There's so much to my story, it's very complex, but you gotta understand one thing. The reason I'm here today is once I was very, very, very lost, but now I'm found, people. <laughs> not a matter of a number of a days of a sobriety for me because in my past life I had a lot of sobriety but I was more miserable sober than I was a drunk or an alcoholic or a drug addict so the answer for me people was I was searching for this freedom on October 4 2011 I was gonna end my life because I couldn't make it sober I couldn't make it as a drunk and alcoholic and a drug addict I thought my existence was truly to be dysfunctional to be a bad father, a bad husband, a bad friend, just an outlaw. But fortunately for me, that worst day that I could possibly face ended up being the best day. And I did one simple thing. I cried out to God after all those years. And that God in my eyes and in my heart is Jesus Christ. Amen. And there's a difference there, people. And here's the difference. I'm recovered. I'm not in recovery. I have been set free from the burdens of addiction. I no longer desire that life, so there's no more misery wanting to do it and trying to stay sober. You understand what I'm saying? I am not Scott the alcoholic, Scott the drug addict. I am Scott, just Scott Caribou, a child of God. I wasn't created to be dysfunction. I wasn't created to especially be an alcoholic, a drug addict, or whatever, pill popping, whatever. And you know what? Addiction comes in many shapes and forms, chemical and then alcohol and all that is just one half of it. I also didn't want to get on the gravy train to just go from one addiction to another, to the another, to the another, to the another, because that's exhausting and it's still an empty life as well. So on October 4th, when I asked God just the one simple thing to stop me from ending my life, to truly show me why I've been put on this planet and who I am and what my purpose is. And in two years, he introduces me to his son, Jesus Christ, and that's when everything came through. I'm in one of the biggest valleys of my life right now, but you know what? I can find joy within that heartache and headache. That's it. I can find joy. The heartache and headache is never going to stop. It's what you're going to do with it when it hits you. There's heartache and headache, but there's no more misery. It's the misery that drove me into those sins of dysfunction and addiction. It's not really the drugs and alcohol, right? Or the pornography or one of the other thousand things, a phone, Netflix. Anything that robs you of your peace and freedom is an addiction, people. Anything that robs you when your kids are saying, let's go out and play, and you got to sit on your phone or Facebook or in the end of a bottle, or in the end of a straw, or a line, or in the end of a needle. <laughs> you see, I knew there was something bigger, because once I had peace and freedom, I got eaten up and I let it happen. It was all my fault. But I'm here today with some wonderful, beautiful people, including yourselves. But we have some volunteers out there right now. Volunteers, please raise your hand. This isn't about the next sober day. This is about finding true peace and freedom. Imagine that, and I don't know where you're at, but I didn't want to be that guy that when a Bud Light commercial came on in a football game that I just wanted to go get drunk. Because <laughs> that life, and you know it, is more miserable than any other. You see, when I met Christ, 
and I started reading the New Testament. And I was communicating with God on a daily basis. And I figured out what really happened on the cross and what's going to happen right now and what's happening out there. Yeah. As Christ said, it is finished. You hear me, people? It is finished. Whatever you're struggling with can be finished right here and right now. And I know many of us among this crowd are in that category. And Jeff's approaching me from the sidelines here, which means my time is up. We have a, a real quick, the shameless promotions of a free <laughs> raffle. And there's plenty of merchandise back here to help support all these ministries involved in the in the silver communities. There's, rough, there's booths, we got pamphlets, I got Bibles, we got everything. But that's after what happens in the next couple of minutes happens. So the volunteers, raise your hand. And I know we got believers out there. What's going to happen here is what happened to me back on October 4th, 2011. Now get this, people. If I wouldn't have done what I did with Christ, I'd be dead. I wouldn't be here. I would have never found that joy and the beauty in life, no matter what. If there's anything tugging on your heart that I've said that makes sense, then talk to one of the volunteers that has their hands up or else I'm going to tell them to chase you down anyways. <laughs> and I said, there's no Bible throwing at people's foreheads. Just throw it at the back of their head when they're trying to get away from you. <laughs> See, this is about a life to enjoy. It's not about a life to stay in depression and misery. Addiction is all over. It's in every one of our lives in some way, shape, and form, I believe. If it's robbing you, even if you are a believer, maybe you're not enough of a believer, check in with one of the volunteers with their hands up. And at this time, we're going to take the next 15 minutes. There's a famous picture of Jesus knocking on your door. For 40 years, I didn't open that thing. For 40 years, I tortured myself. Tortured myself and everybody around me. And the whole time he was right there saying, let me in, you dummy. And he didn't really say that, but yes, he did. There you go. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much. But for the next 15 minutes, we're going to gather up the people. And if you need to talk to me later after that and want to come up and do the wheelies and the bike and the photos and all that, we'll do that. But for right now, please huddle up. If you have kids, you know what the best insurance policy for our kids is? It's not Allstate, it's Jesus. Huddle up, people. God bless you. Thank you all for listening to me. And we'll see you in about 15, 20 minutes.